Let me just start by saying I'm here with Vivian Kadari and Mike Nickenchuk from Beyond Conflict. They are important therapeutic alliance partners for us, and they're doing amazing work around the world. So we're just here to see what you guys are up to, to give us the update. And, and as you said, it's a, an interesting time around migration. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear what is going on that, that you're moved to address, but also all the things that you're doing, that how your programs are expanding. We've partnered with the WHO on a really interesting new project um, on this platform that they're developing called Equip. Mm -hmm. And the goal, um, really, it's grounded in the idea of around the world, not just with Beyond Conflict, but with tons of other humanitarian partners, we're seeing a tremendous increase in the use of lay, lay folks and paraprofessionals to deliver psychosocial and community mental health interventions. Excellent. And it, it's a necessity because there's not going to be enough clinically trained staff in the developing world or in humanitarian settings that speak the language, know the context. But on the other hand, there's a massive do no harm risk. Because when you're working with folks that haven't gone through years of schooling, there is a higher risk when you start doing things that gets inside people's heads and their trauma and their past, that you're gonna create you know, harmful situations for folks. You don't want folks to be doing things that they're not qualified to do, but at the same time, we have to fill a tremendous gap in community care. So the WHO is trying to develop a, a system to unify and standardize um, sort of minimum standards and basic um, competencies for paraprofessionals that are delivering mental health and psychosocial support in communities, but are not professionals. So trying to unify minimum standards for paraprofessionals in community MHPSS programs. And we're really you know, excited to be piloting um, some new competency assessments for our lay folks that are facilitators and rolling that out here in Jordan and soon yeah. also in, in Latin America. That's astonishing. That's, that's huge. <laughs> it's exciting. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and Vivian, it, I mean, I mean you're, you're leading our work in Latin America. Yes, um, we're having some initi uh, exciting initiatives going on in Latin America, specifically right now in Central America, we partner with an organization called Glasswing International. And with Glasswing, we have been working on making the first Spanish language adaptation of the field guide intervention that we deployed in Jordan. Wow. Um, here, we're, we're, uh, as we on conflict, we're always interested, not just on um mental health improvements in a community individual but also like being able to see how that might impact community cohesion and peace building initiatives so right now we're um just one week away from beginning at uh our first uh training of uh, potential facilitators for or um a version of the field guide for el salvador uh, specifically, this version uh, was developed for teachers in El Salvador who have been reporting, um, like a lot of teachers worldwide, like an increase in their stress load given the pandemic and how has that has shifted their role expectations while also dealing with the context of El Salvador and, and issues around migration and community violence. So um, this is just a starting point where we're looking with this partnership to then expand towards police, um, healthcare workers, and to hopefully be able to track community um, level markers of uh, how trauma psychoeducation might be able to help people cope better um, with them, their own symptoms and also help them regulate interpersonally. So that's extremely exciting. And it also just uh, lays the groundwork for us to be able to shift towards uh, one of my personal goals, which is to have a field guide version for the Venezuelan migrants uh, spread throughout Latin America. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that will be something that will be coming uh, very shortly. You know, and I hear you both talk about these programs. I think, I think there are so many places that need this. Um, I, I think about I think about all the favelas in Brazil. I think about all the the indigenous people in Chile who 
who have eye injuries from their protests. I think it, all through Latin America, I think there's so many places with so much deep history of colonial trauma that would benefit from this. And then I, I think of the lack of, of access to care, even in this wealthy country, the United States. And I, I wonder how, how you would think about translating this to be beyond um, something that serves migrant communities. Thank you.